find the product of 3.14, 3 and 14 hundredths, you know, that's pi, times 2.4, or 2 and 4 tenths, rounded answer to the nearest tenth. All right, so once again, we've got to find the product of 3 and 14 hundredths times 2 and 4 tenths, round the answer to the nearest tenth. All right, so let's see what's going on. Remember I said something about that's pi. That's actually a round off for pi, but it's what we usually notify is using our pi to two decimal places or two hundredths place, all right? So that's why I mentioned that earlier in the problem. And then we got two and four tenths, which, yeah, could be a diameter. Could be a diameter right there, folks, that we're using a circumference. But nonetheless, we're going to multiply these two numbers together. So we're going to use just good old no calculator on this, all right? Let's see what happens when we multiply together. How about it? Three and fourteen hundredths. And let's put down 2 and 4 tenths right underneath that. And we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply through this. All right, pretty straightforward. And what's the last thing? Everybody remember, 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 remember. We're going to round off at the very end to the nearest tenth. Now, I can guarantee you already you're going to have more than tenths place here. I see one, two, three decimal places. So round off will be kind of fun on this. Let's check it out see where we go. All right. We got 4 times 4. It's going to give us 16. So pop it right down there, the 6. We'll put a 1 right up there. How about it? 1 times 4? We got that. 4 and add 1 to that. It's going to be 5. And you know what? We got no carrying over here. So let's how about it? Let's go 2. 3 times 4. 3 times 4. We got those times tables rolling out there, my friends. Looks like 1256 so far. We'll put a decimal in in just a minute once we get all this addition done. We got one more round to go with the multiplying. I'll get rid of that one because it may not be needed again. All right. How about it? 4 times 2. I like that. Double it. We're going to get 8. 1 times 2, double that, we get 2, and keep kicking along here. It looks like, it looks like 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. At this point, we want to just simply do a little bit of arithmetic. Let's add things together, all right? Looks to me like, what have we got here? Again, let's make sure our multiplication is right before we do all this craziness. I see 56 and 12, that looks good. And then we've got uh, 8, 2, and 6. Everything's doubled, so let's add together now. We get a 6. We have, it looks like, how about it, 13, 5 and 8, bring that one over. 1, 2, and 2 more gives us 5. And we got this little 7 hanging on, hanging on there, okay? Now, as I said, important, where do we put the decimal? I've got 1, 2, 3 places. I've got to count in from the end. 1, 2, 3. It's going to put it right between the 7 and 5. So basically, there's a 7 and, whoo, 536 thousandths with a TH. But, as I did, we underline, we got to go rounding. We got to go into round mode here, all right? So here we have it. We have 7 and that 536 hanging on. There's your decimal place. We're worried about whether the 5 is going to go up or it's going to stay the same, all right? To do that, we've got to look at the digit right next to it. The number is 3 in that digit slot in the hundredths place, if you will. And we look at that and say, hmm, less than 5, less than halfway. So, yep, we're going to keep that where it is. That will be your rounded off answer. Seven and five tenths. Is it exactly seven and a half? Actually, it's seven and a little bit more, but estimating wise, we're going to call it seven and a half or seven and five tenths. For more math help, visit tnlearn.org.